All right, everyone, RCP is one of the few sites that I don't put in the archive.is thing. Number one, because you can't, but number two, they're replicating like a CNN story, so I can read the story without having to give CNN any revenue. And I just think that that's great. So thank you to RCP for that. And also for aggregating polls and not just like cherry picking them. It's really great. Uh, but we got to talk about CNN uh, being really, really funny this time in regards to Jeff Sessions. Now, Jeff Sessions um, is, is one of Trump's people, of course. He heads the DOJ. CNN doesn't really like Jeff when he's, you know, talking about, oh, maybe we need to investigate the, uh, the Clinton stuff again. I think that there might, might be some uh, funny business over there. Might have to look into it. Or the FISA abuses. Now, Jeff Sessions has already said they're going to do the latter. As for the former, Trump keeps goading him. But uh, Trump came out and said, uh, the DOG needs to investigate, you know, what's Jeff Sessions doing? It's outrageous. Basically reaming Jeff Sessions on Twitter, which is something that a sitting president has never done before. No, you know, basically taking, instead of being in the boardroom, instead of being in the White House, and taking Jeff Sessions aside saying, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Instead, he decides to put it out for the public to see on Twitter. Now, while this is abnormal, I'm not sure that it's particularly a bad thing. All it is is the public gets to see what would be going on behind closed doors otherwise anyway. It'd be in a private phone call or it'd be in a meeting, but it would still be going on, so I'm not sure exactly what the difference is. Now, Jeff Sessions is a drug war waging crazy man. He's not well liked by many of Trump's fans, except when he comes out and hints that, oh yeah, maybe I know that something went on with Clinton, maybe I'll get around to investigating it, which is probably just bullshit anyway. Sort of titillating people. Maybe Trump makes him do that, and you know, Jeff gets tired of it after a while and complains. Uh, Jeff Sessions is not liked, though, by people on the left either. He's a drug warrior, for one thing. His own staff think he's crazy on marijuana. I happen to concur. I think I would say I would go further left than any Democrat on the issue. Uh, Jeff Sessions doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. So why is it that CNN is coming and saying, Trump is shameful for talking down to Jeff Sessions on Twitter? Who cares? Well, he's going to tell him that stuff anyway. And you don't even like Jeff Sessions. You're just using this as an excuse to attack Trump. See, the thing is, the only reason CNN would be concerned, the only reason the legacy media would consider this a bad thing is that Trump chose not to talk down to Jeff Sessions on a live interview with them so they could get better ratings. That's why they're upset. They're upset because he did it on Twitter. They're upset that he did it without the screen of the lamestream media between him and the people who then are witnessing what's going on. See, the media, corporate media, is used to having a great deal of political control simply because if a politician doesn't buddy-buddy with them, they can skew what they say, cut apart an interview, deny them, you know, coverage on cable, or, or if they like them, they'd say, hey, come aboard, uh, we can give you, you know, you, you, all you have to do is play nice with us. We can give you twice as many interviews as your opponent, you'll get all sorts of airplay, it's, it'll basically be free advertising for you. We'll talk about, you know, about all your good polls and none of the bad ones. We'll talk about the ideas that you say we, that we agree with you, and we'll sort of gloss over the ones in which we don't agree with you. Or we can ruin your career. We can only cover you in a negative light. Now, Trump has taken that basic concept and sort of warped the curve because he, he originally, I think, he realized that the legacy media largely wouldn't like him anyway because of the way that he does business. He's like, ah, am I really going to get along with most of these people? I can occasionally get a word in edgewise. Occasionally I'll get treated fairly, but most of the, for the most part, they're going to lie about me. So he said, well, then fuck him. I'm not going to talk to him at all, other than occasionally talking to like Tucker Carlson or something. I mean, go on Bill O'Reilly's podcast. That'd be a really funny one. That'd spawn all sorts of uh, pussy grabbing jokes. Now, he, uh, he just goes on Twitter. And what he's realized is that if he makes a tweet, more people tend to see that then would see him on an interview anyway. You know, for the five seconds he gets to talk uninterrupted on ABC News, he could still, he'd make 10 tweets instead and have 10 million people, uh, you know, looking at that material. And also, he knows something else. He can make a tweet, encapsulate his ideas in, in very brief terms, and the media is still going to talk about it. They're still going to say what they, he, he can even uh, misspell a word and he can guarantee that they'll all talk about it. So he can say something, he can make a tweet that normally the legacy media wouldn't post because it would be positive for Trump. It would be a good thing for him. They don't like that. He misspells a word and he knows that they're so stupid. They're so uh, so easy, so mind numbed at this point that they'll talk about it even if they normally wouldn't simply because they'll be talking about how Trump can't spell. 
But the only way that they can make the story, the, the clickbait, and compete with one another and get those views, is to actually take the message he wants you to hear and, and put it on, up on your cable screen or up on their websites. CNN defending Jeff Sessions. So you're defending the far-right drug warrior that may uh, decide to go ape shit and, and uh, destroy the Clintons. You're going to root for him over Trump, who you, I mean, on guns, you probably agree with him. Probably you think, oh, he's, he's a moderate. He, we, he, had, he thinks that the Second Amendment is bad, too, just like we do, which I think he's pulled back somewhat. I think he's beginning to moderate his position. I think he did a little bit of A-B testing. So it could be that that second strike goes away because it could turn out it was nothing more than 40 chess. My worry, of course, was that it wouldn't be. And in the off chance, I'm going to criticize him over it because that's how A-B testing works. You have to air your honest opinion about things, otherwise he's not going to know what you think. Well, yeah, so if you have an audience, definitely you want to say you disagree with the idea of, of more gun control. I want less in the country. But CNN says, okay, the dude who wants to throw weed smokers in jail is better than the dude who ultimately... What's, what's fucking Trump done that's far right? Tax reform, okay. He's saving people money and wages began to rise. What else specifically has he fucking done that's got these people so bent out of shape? The answer is... For people who are in those multinational firms, nothing, except for one thing, and that's why they're mad at him all the time. He won't talk to them. He goes on Twitter. He go. He uses social media to bypass the corporate media. They don't like that. And they get other politicians who they're in partnership with to go against Trump, too, because they still have political control over them. Other politicians that are older, they've already fallen into the cable and the terrestrial radio trap. They can't extract themselves from it. They're beholden to these people to give them airplay. They don't know how to use social media. They have some staffer update a Twitter page once in a blue moon. It's all they do. The only pe Have you noticed that the younger, more hip crowd tend to gravitate towards Trump more, like the Rands and Amashes? tend to be the ones he hangs with, and then maybe someone like McConnell or McCain, someone really old, really, really outdated, just a fucking neoliberal. They don't want to talk to Trump because they can't. The CNNs and Fox Newses have control of these people. That's why. Trust me, that's why it's all about money. It has nothing to do with uh, any partisan bullshit. No, it has to do exactly with that. It has to do with the fact that they need the cable news media. They need the radio interview. In order to, to wage an election or, or you know solicit donations, they need to go on CNN and talk to them. They need to have ABC or Fox. or They need to go on Glenn Beck's show and go on <laughs> The Blaze for all its 10 viewers. By the way, their YouTube channel is fucking hilarious. You look at the sub count on The Blaze's YouTube channel sometime. You know, the former, formerly one of the most powerful people on Fox, Glenn Beck, it gets kicked off and becomes basically a podcaster. Yeah, look at look at the amount of support there, and ask yourself if that isn't the most uh, funny the funny thing you've ever seen. Uh, it's a little bit like Bill O'Reilly's podcast. He probably makes more at this point than poor Beck. Um, no, Jeff Sessions is crazy. I don't like the dude. Some people have uh, submitted the concept that this is all just a mind game. Trump and him actually get along. And they're sort of doing this together. I'm not so sure about that because when you look at Jeff Sessions over time. He's an actual conservative, an actual right-winger. Maybe not fiscally conservative, even socially. He's a conservative, a moralistic fellow. He's more like a Mike Pence. Mike Pence has a long track record of actually being religious. Trump supposedly jokes about him in private company and talks about, uh, about Pence marrying Jesus or some crazy shit I thought it was. Uh, Trump is not religious, not moralistic, and not right-wing. On taxes, it seems he's a fiscal conservative, more or less. Uh, Gary Johnson, who reamed Trump during the election, did you see, he went on Fox a few days ago, and he's like, oh, well, I don't, I don't really like Trump or anything, but, you know, the tax reform is pretty good. Anytime when you can lower taxes, it's great. He just needs to now cut spending. Where's the spending cut to go along with it, by the way? It's actually like the most sane thing Johnson has said. I think he lowered the dose on his cannabis before that interview. Uh, I like the, I like the on a personal level he's a funny dude, although he can be a little bit of a firebrand. He he tries to be tougher than he is. I think was early as he tried to look tough and grumpy when he's actually like a a, a hippie who climbs mountains and stuff. It's, it, it rubs people the wrong way. He shouldn't do that. He should have gotten high before all those interviews. Instead, he would have been more himself. It would have been funnier. Donald Trump uh, is a business Democrat from Manhattan. So when people assume that he's just trolling the world along with Jeff Sessions, I'm not so sure about that. It's like Pence. Pence is basically the invisible vice president. You almost never see Trump and Pence talking. Like, Tr Pence gives a speech. It's like, oh, Trump is 
brought reform and this is good and you know tax reforms have he probably does really like trump's tax and regulation proposals i don't think he agrees on any moral issue with donald trump and if donald trump actually believes in his uh diatribe on guns pence probably disagrees with that too that's something on which the evangelicals i think would be more sane than trump which is a little bit scary and sad i think he needs to back off according to the polling i did which is ostensibly largely people who like trump at least somewhat most of them don't like his proposal on guns that would alienate large segments of his core fan base right as he's beginning to increase his support with tax reform be a terrible idea to go down the route of being a gun grabber trump should just tacitly endorse expanded background checks, leave the rest alone and never talk about it again so people forget about the whole thing. That's what he should do. That should be his operative strategy. Other Republicans have done such a thing. Oh, yeah, we need to do something about them gun violences, says George W. And then, you know, a week later, he stops talking about it. He's not going to talk about it again. The public has a short attention span. Half the public has already forgotten all about the Parkland shootings. You know, which is also, the short attention span can be a real problem, but in, in defense of the Constitution, it can actually serve you pretty well, to tell the truth. So, uh, yeah, shame on CNN for calling Trump shameful. For, uh, you know, they're trying to defend Jeff Sessions. Okay, this dude wants to throw you in jail for that doobie you smoked last year. Uh, but he's, but you know, we feel so sorry for him. It's unpresidential. Trump doesn't care if you find him unpresidential, trust me. He doesn't really give a fuck. He, ha he I think he has a great time trolling the entire nation. Absolutely. I think he has fun bothering people. And he knows that he can do that, and it's just part of his personality and image. It's how he brands himself. He's done it for decades. Go ahead and play his game and try to beat him. You're not going to make any, you're not going to have any success. 